Hi folks, Mr. Tessalonian back here again. I've been working on the cathode ray projects and the anode ray projects for a while now and I thought, you know, maybe you'd like to know how to build a simple Geiger counter so that you can actually see that it's producing x-rays through a cathode ray tube. Uh, one of the things I've been able to come up with is this. I started out with basically a simple meter cable for an electric meter. Uh, this gives me a nice insulated material with a center metal post sticking out of it that was actually the perfect size to fit right inside of this hollow aluminum tube right here, which you can see I've already got our end cap on, which I'll describe here in just a second. Uh, so what I've done is basically, if I hold this up to the camera, you can see there's a very, very thin copper wire pointing dead straight off the tip of that meter's uh, metal tip that was already on there. And that's going to be our electron wire. That'll actually grab the electrons that are going to be created inside the process when uh, the X-rays or, let's say, gamma rays, whatever uh, radiation comes through this, actually hits inside of the gas and creates an ion and an electron reaction. The ion will go to the outer case, which will be this little tube right here. The ion will go there, which is a positive charge. And the electron, which is a negative charge, will go right here to this little thin wire and be accelerated down that wire towards our meter, which we'll use for our Geiger counter reader device. Uh, so what I've got to do now is basically take this little piece of tubing, and you notice I've got a little end cap here. Like I said, I'll describe that to you. It's just aluminum foil. Now, aluminum foil will stop certain radiation, like an alpha particle. An alpha particle will not go through that aluminum foil. In fact, an alpha particle won't go through uh, a sheet of paper. And in fact, a beta particle may not go through this. So what we may only be able to see is gamma radiation. Uh, and possibly small amount of x-ray radiation from this. Now, if this doesn't work, the reason it's just a little covering is I want to be able to take these on and off and switch what kind of covering I have on there so that I can detect different gamma radiations, x-ray radiation, or alpha radiation, all those, and each one will require a different filter tip on it. Uh, so now what we're going to do here, very carefully, let me kind of focus why I do this here, is I'm going to take this little piece of wire here on the end of the meter, and I'm going to really carefully thread it right up into that tube, just like that, and we're going to push the tube all the way back, and there we go. So that's going to be our Gagger tube all put together right there. Uh, the next step to do this is actually going to be to take this little wooden grommet that I built here. It's actually a separator, insulator separ separator. Wood's a pretty poor insulator, but it'll work for this. That'll actually slide over this with this piece of aluminum slid over that. So we'll actually have something that looks very similar to this when we're done. I wanted to show you it before I closed it all up and sealed it off. So you have an outer aluminum protective tube, an inner aluminum tube, you've got one cap cover and you can switch those from a piece of mica to be able to see alpha particles, you can use mica. Uh, if you want to just only be able to see beta and, and larger particles, you can put a piece of paper over that and it'll just stop the alpha particles. Aluminum will stop the alpha and beta particles and let you see uh, gamma rays and the rest of them that are higher energy, maybe some cosmic rays if they actually showed up in something like this, but you can see those in a fog chamber which is really neat. Um, so anyways, let me go ahead and throw the rest of this together. We're also going to take one more of these little thin electric wires right here. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see that. Very thin electric wire. And I'm actually going to mount that wire right to the outer aluminum tube here. And that's going to stick out with an insulator between it and the inside wire. That's going to stick out to be our ion source. So that'll be a, the positive hookup for our meter. And that should give us a, both a positive and a negative flow, an ion and an electron flow into our meter. And we should be able to read very minute uh, differences in voltage based on the fact if a radioactive particle enters into our Geiger tube. So let me put this together and I'll show you what it looks like and how it works when it's done. All right, folks, so I've got our ion wire. Let me hold that up to the camera there. You can see there's a little thin electric wire hooked to the outside of our aluminum inner gagger tube there. Uh, what we're going to do now is actually take that. We're going to thread this little wooden uh, insulator block. Well, it's not the best insulator, but it'll work for this because it's not actually the reaction chamber. We're going to very carefully take the end of that thin wire that you can barely see there in the camera. We're going to thread it in through the wooden block. Just like that. Get it right up to the end there. Oh, I put it on backwards. Give me a second there. Sorry, folks. Let's try it around the other way. Okay. So, now I'm going to push that right up to the top there so it's even. So there we go. We're ready to go. We've got our interior and our, our exterior wire here, our iron wire. Now we're ready to put our interior wire on there. But first we're going to put our outer case, which is this right here. So I'm going to go ahead and slide our outer case up over that, just like this. 
There we go. That should be good enough right there. We'll get it all centered once it's uh, complete. And now for the very last step here, we're going to take our inner probe wire, our electron wire, and we're going to slide it very carefully inside of our interior aluminum tube. And there we go. So we're now connected. There's our electron and our ion wire, positive and negative wires. We have our cap on there, which we can change to change the kind of particles we're looking at. Uh, we've got our exterior protection tube on there. All we're going to have to do now is basically hopefully put some uh, a reactive agent in there, which I'm going to kind of tell you about later on. Uh, and then we should be able to point this at our cathode ray tubes that we built for the Wimshurst electrostatic generator. We should be able to show some kind of voltage change as an indicator that there is a radioactive presence being produced from that cathode ray's target. So let me set this all up. Uh, we'll try to hook that up and give you a demonstration of exactly how this works in just a moment. All right, folks, so now that we've got the entire tube ready to go, we've got our positive and negative legs, uh, our wires put off of that so we can catch our electron and our ion flow out of this. The next step to turn this into a Geiger counter is to incorporate a simple meter like this. Uh, this meter is a digital meter, and it's a sampling digital meter, which is going to be the poorest design for making a Geiger counter. What you really want is one of those small, very sensitive analog meters. It has a little needle inside of it that moves back and forth. An analog meter will work much, much better for this, but this is what I had sitting around right now. So I just wanted to show you exactly how to finish this all up. Uh, so first thing you're going to do is... We have these wires hooked up around backwards. This is actually my negative flow. So our red on this case is going to be our negative. Our black is going to be our positive. So you're going to want to flip that around on your meter also. So we're going to hook our negative flow right to the meter. We're going to go ahead and take our positive line from the meter. And we're going to hook it up to our positive ion output wire. Hopefully you can see that in the shot right there. You can hook that up to there. Introduce any form of a radioactive material or uh, rays from gamma rays to x-rays to this front end here and you're going to be able to see a voltage on your meter indicating some form of radioactivity. Well, I hope you enjoyed how to build your own Geiger counter. This is Mr. Teslonian in the Teslonian Man Show. Please join us next time how we use this to measure our gamma rays and our cathode rays. All right, folks, so we have our homemade Geiger counter hooked up now to our meter. We've got our ion line and our electron line now hooking down into this meter here. That's actually the meter I'm going to use, not the one that I originally showed you in the video, which is this one. It started freaking out because I got it smacked by electrostatic charge, so it always goes way up like that. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and use this one. And you'll notice there's a little tiny bit of charge still hitting off of this as the electrostatic charge inside of the Wimhurst disks here. This Wimhurst electrostatic generator that I'm using, the actual uh, plexiglass for the disk, the dielectric, will actually hold charge for quite a while and slowly leak that charge off. And that's why you're seeing little events still sitting there. That means there's actually a small amount of radiation still being produced uh, out of that cathode ray as that slowly bleeds down. And as an event happens, you'll notice there will actually be a little tiny spike there. So what we're going to do here real quick is we're going to set up the camera. Give me a second here, probably a little shaky. Alright, so we've got the voltmeter now hooked up. And we've got it set at AC voltage down there. Let me go over to the Wimhurst and give this a turn. Let's see if we can witness uh, events through electrostatic voltage presence on the meter. So here we go. All right, so let's give this thing a turn. All right, well, as that thing winds down, that should have been enough to demonstrate any kind of interactions we were having. Oh yeah, look at those voltage spikes created as we produce x-rays, and those x-rays are being converted back into electricity in our homemade uh, Geiger counter tube. There you go. Now as the machine slowly winds down here, like I said, there's going to be an electrostatic charge constantly leaking out of that dielectric slowly. Once that fully bleeds down, the voltage will go much lower. It actually tells me there's still rads right now being produced from this. Uh, those discs are so large. Four foot in diameter disc holds a lot of electrostatic charge. Uh, so that's actually still producing radiation at nice little spikes there. I I'd throw this in there just so you could see exactly how our homemade Geiger counter tube works and our homemade cathode tube, our cathode ray tube, 
actually functions and actually does produce x-rays. Until next time, I hope you enjoyed. This is Mr. Teslonian and the Teslonian Man Show.